Well, hello there. The other day I posted on my Instagram three different results from uh, three different daylight lighting techniques that I did in Keyshot. And I asked you guys which one you preferred the most. And uh, this one that we see right here was a clear winner. You thought that the contrast was good in the shadows and the colors were good as well. And uh, the other two, while also looking quite cool and cinematic maybe, uh, the contrast in the shadows were just too low, they were too bright and the color grading was a bit too heavy. Uh, too much blue and too much purple. If you you ask if I could do a tutorial on how to set this lighting up and yes I can, here it is. A quick note on the uh, scene setup before going into the actual lighting technique. Uh, this scene consists of uh, four models. We have a tree, we have a ground plane with a texture from Polygon, we have a chair from Dimensiva, and I have this uh, blanket from CG Trader. Yeah, and the tree is from uh, this people. There's a link to uh, all the models in the description below. Let's hide the geometry view, hitting O on the keyboard to do that, and unpause this and go into the lighting design. So here in the uh, environment tab, I will add a new environment, call it daylight and the technique that i used for the winning entry so to speak was um, the sun and sky system built into keyshot so let's uh, select that one and we get some strong sunlight into our scene so what the sun and sky system does in keyshot is that it creates a, a sky and a sun and depending on the position of the sun you can click it and drag it the color of the sky will change. So at dawn or dusk, the uh, the sky gets more orange and uh, should correspond to how the sky um, acts in real life. What you can do here in the sun and sky system as well is to uh, pick a specific location or type in some co coordinates if you have that and a specific date and time and get the exact position of the sun. So I'm quite close to... Um, Copenhagen at the moment, Oop. the date is Wednesday 23rd, and the time is 11.40. Okay, so this is where the sun is at my position uh, at this specific time. Super useful for some architectural stuff, I guess, but for the most of the time, you probably just want to position the sun where you want it to be. Precisely, don't care too much about the position and time. So what you do is to enable this custom sun position and now the sun is free from all its change chains and you can drag it wherever you want it to. So uh, for this particular scene, I want the uh, chair to be in the edge of the shadow from this tree. So it could be something like this. Remember, the higher you drag the sun, the, uh, the shorter the shadows will get and Dragging it side, sideways uh, determines yeah, where this, which direction the shadow will fall. So uh, let's try something like this. I think it's uh, quite close to what I had in the rendering. When you have positioned your sun, you have uh, like two more options to play with. You have this turbidity, which uh, if we crank it up to 20, you can see here that this sky gets a bit more hazy and uh, not cloudy, but yeah, add in some haze to the to the scene that uh, maybe softens the, the shadows a bit. Um, I'll keep that at two. And the sun size, if we just use the region view, hit it uh, up here or control shift R to um, have a look at this specific part only, we can see that if we crank the sun up to, for example, 10. The brightness will stay the same, but the shadows will get way, way softer. So if you think that the shadows are too hard or too soft, you can uh, adjust the sun size on this slider. I like this uh, pretty hot one, so uh, I'll stick with one. A really important thing to mention is that um, I had the lighting settings on interior mode here. Um, if we do the region view again, just on, on this shadow from the tree, yeah. Um, if I go to the product setup, the product rendering mode, we can see that the shadow is uh, quite 
gray actually there's no blue uh, color bleeding through for some re reason so i have found that for for this sun and sky system the the result looks better at least to me when using the interior mode and you can see now that we have a bit more of that blue uh, color appearing that you see in real life as well so an important thing to to remember is to use the uh, interior mode for rendering the sun and sky system and that's actually it i did for for the lighting setup um, for this rendering right here i outputted it as uh, a 32 bit tiff file and open it in uh, lightroom and i didn't do much in here uh, in fact i took the shadows down just a bit and also the whites here so right now this is quite bright so maybe cranking it down just slightly will will help so by saving it out as a 32-bit tiff uh, saves uh, way more information in the pixels about the lighting so even if something is a bit burned out or there is, isn't completely shadow you still have some information in it so if you're here in lightroom turn it back up you will get some information out of it uh, and again if something is burned out you can uh, most of the time take this white or highlight shadow slider down and and still have the information so it's um, if you're dealing with some super sensitive lighting setup, uh, I find it beneficial to save it out as a 32-bit 32, 32 file to have all this stuff to play around with in post. A few comments on the uh, rendering that I posted on the Instagram was that the shadows were a bit too dark on this one, so maybe I shouldn't uh, take them down, maybe a bit up instead. And also, can always play around with the uh, temperature, the white balance. Maybe you want it uh, to look warmer, maybe a bit cooler. It's all uh, depending on the purpose of your rendering. So that's it. Super quick introduction to create a uh, daylight lighting setup in Keyshot. As always, I hope you learned something from it and can use it in your own projects. And until next time, take care.